behind me is the first onshore wave project in the US. It's a company called EcoWave Power. And the genius of their design is that all the hardware to harness the energy of our oceans is entirely onshore, meaning maintenance is as simple as walking over and doing what you gotta do. Now, right now, these are all in their storm guard mode where they have them up and out of the water to protect them in the event of huge surges. But when they're down, They are ready to harness the power of the ocean's tides. So that's why we're here at the Port of Los Angeles in beautiful Southern California to learn more. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba DaVinci. This video is brought to you by Franklin. So the company I'm talking about is EcoWave Power. They built a pilot project of their wave energy conversion technology at the Port of Los Angeles, specifically at the Alta C campus. The system has a total nominal power rating of 100 kilowatts, and it's designed to start producing electricity from waves as small as half a meter, about one and a half feet high. Because it's a demonstration plant, it won't be connected to the grid. Its goal is to prove the technology works in the US marine conditions and to navigate the American red tape, which isn't exactly a walk in the park these days. However, their other pilot plant on the port of Haifa in Israel is connected currently to the country's national grid. And they operate another grid-connected pilot plant in Gibraltar that operated for six years between 2016 and 2022. This puts EcoWave solution at a technology readiness level or TRL of seven or eight out of nine. This isn't experimental, hype, or hopeful thinking. This is, at this point, proven technology that has been demonstrated and qualified in an operational environment. So then, what's missing and what's next? That's what we're about to find out. But before we get into that, let's talk about why I think this is important. EcoWave Power's core philosophy is actually dead simple. Don't fight the ocean's fury offshore. Sidestep it by moving the technology onshore. This seemingly small shift in thinking creates a cascade of game-changing advantages. So you have the floaters here, and the floaters, each one has like three pipes that are coming from each floater. One pipe is basically to send the hydraulic fluid from the floater to the accumulators. Okay. The other pipe is like the return pipe, uh, where non-pressurized fluid from the tank returns back to the floaters. And one of them is just meant to lift the floaters. So in other locations where we have like storm, storm conditions and so on, then the, we would usually have a sensor, which would detect that the waves are too high for the system to handle, and then automatically lift the floater above the water level and keep it in the upward position. In this case, we use the upward position for maintenance because it's much easier access instead of somebody having to climb there and to maintain, you know, everything from the water side, you can just lift it and do the maintenance from the land side, which is safer, easier and cheaper. Offshore maintenance is notoriously expensive. It requires specialized vessels and divers. With this system, maintenance is simple, safe and inexpensive, and you can do it from the pier. The company has successfully kept its annual O&M cost in line with their target of below 4% of the initial capital cost, which is unheard of in marine energy. Typically, it's closer to 10 to 15%. What's more, we're talking about a lower percentage of an also lower number because the third benefit is reduced capital cost. The system leverages existing marine structures like piers and breakwaters, which avoid the massive cost associated with building offshore foundations and laying miles of expensive subsea export cables. And finally, there's minimal environmental impact. The technology has a strong environmental profile. It requires no seabed drilling or construction, attaches to already disturbed man-made structures, and uses a biodegradable hydraulic fluid to mitigate the risk of leaks. When you add all this up, you get the most ambitious benefit, cost. EcoWave Power has publicly forecasted a levelized cost of energy, or LCOE, for its commercial scale installations at around $45 per megawatt hour. So is that, is that good? Is it bad? Here's a comparison to other forms of energy production. Utility scale solar, depending on the type of installation, falls between $29 and $92 per megawatt hour. Onshore wind, similarly around $29 to $73. Offshore wind from 72 to 140, and then there's nuclear, which comes in around 141 to 221 dollars per megawatt hour. And finally, if you're wondering why coal is being phased out and being abandoned, it falls at around 68 to 166 dollars per megawatt hour, which is just too expensive nowadays. I'm here at RE Plus, and I'm joined by Gary Lamb, the CEO of Franklin, one of the fastest growing battery companies here in the U.S. So, Gary, what's going on this year with you guys? We have introduced U.S. productions complying with domestic content 
now making out of Santa Clara, California. I hear you have some new products that are making some waves. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So the biggest launch this year is the A-Power S with the PV integrations. That means you could connect direct PV into the battery as an all-in-one unit. Now installer can install the job faster, more efficient, and homeowner also benefit from a higher efficiency. What about EVs? We've been hearing a lot about vehicle to load and vehicle to grid. How does Franklin come into the picture there? So we have taken a completely different approach than anyone else in the market. We allow any EV to output power from their designated AC power port and power the home, right? You don't need to spend additional six, seven thousand dollars to put a state-of-the-art bi-directional charger, where Franklin system with an existing infrastructure connects your EV seamlessly with the home. And I just heard that over the last couple of years, you've gone and become one of the top three leading battery manufacturers here in the US. So what's been the secret to all that success? The reason for choosing us because we are the manufacturer that designed for the real world, really what homeowner need and really exactly what installer needs. And we answer the service call in minutes, not in hours. Yes, we got your back. You know, feel fewer component to install, happier customer and stronger business. So $45 per megawatt hour would make it incredibly competitive with many other forms of energy generation, even solar and wind, which is the cheapest by far. But will they actually hit their targets? Is a number that low even realistic for wave power? And that's a question I definitely wanted an answer to because none of this makes sense if they don't. So after a ton of research, what we found was pretty surprising, but we'll get back to that here in a minute. Now, to really appreciate the potential for wave energy and why EcoWave's approach is so different, we need a quick refresher on wave energy in general. I'll keep it short and simple, but if you want, you can also just skip to the next chapter. Something that surprises a lot of people, myself included, is that wave energy comes from the sun. Yeah, it's basically a highly concentrated form of solar energy. Here's how it works. The sun heats the atmosphere, creating wind. That wind blows across thousands of miles of open ocean, transferring its energy into water and building up waves. The energy is proportional to the square of the wave's height. That means a two-foot wave doesn't have twice the energy of a one-foot wave, it has four times the energy. And a three-foot wave is nine times, and so forth. This exponential relationship is why harnessing waves is so tantalizing. Unlike most tidal energy companies that we've talked about in the past, which are in the deep sea, which require submersibles and specialized divers to maintain, maintaining this equipment is as simple as just walking up and doing what you gotta do because it's onshore. That is the most genius part about this. And ports like this, if you look back there, that entire off-grid building has that green generator running to produce power. And ports generally just use a lot of electricity. So in the future where we produce energy on site, minimizing distribution lines, this is something that might be installed on every port and around the world. And in the future, obviously, we'll be installing these where there are huge waves and not in a breakwater situation like this. So let's look under the hood. The system is brilliantly simple and relies on proven off-the-shelf components. So we are at EcoWave Power's pilot in the port of Los Angeles. Uh, here we can see the inside of the unit, the conversion unit. So the floaters outside are going up and down with the movement of the waves. They're pushing the hydraulic cylinders, which transmits biodegradable fluid into these land-located accumulators. A pressure is being built. The higher the wave, the higher the pressure. Used to turn the hydro motor, turning the generator, and sending clean electricity into the grid. Ah, actually, here it's not grid connected, so usually send into the grid, but here it's like lo used locally. Yeah. And there's two different sizes, or th they're both generators? Yes. Yeah, so, so this project actually came here from another working site, which was Wavier, like in Gibraltar. So that's why we have like two generators and two hydro motors. So basically the small hydro motor and the small generator are for lower waves. Uh, the big hydro motor and the big generator are for higher wave regimes. And if the waves are extremely high, both of them can work in parallel. It's a simple, robust hydroelectric process with all the important, complex and fragile machinery, safe and dry on land. Brilliantly simple. Now, we're in the port of Los Angeles, which is a weird choice for a wave energy project, but this is a demonstration plant. This was really difficult to get off the ground because this is a very new technology and legislation and regulations have to catch up. But this took about two years to get all the regulations in place and about a couple of months to actually build out. The genius of their design is how easily it gets installed. These are all just one piece elements that get dropped in place and anchored to this pile that we are standing on top of. 
Now to produce energy, there's a piston. You can see that right there. And as these floats move up and down in the water, they push on that piston and push hydraulic pressure down these tubes into accumulators. One question I had early on is what kind of power output do we see? Are we seeing like fluctuating power outputs like this from when the waves come up and then go back down? No, they have accumulators. And so this pressure goes through a one way valve and pressurizes an accumulator and then the accumulator releases energy slowly to power a generator. That allows you to continue to build up pressure over time. On average, about six seconds is typically how long it is for waves to go up and down. That's like their oscillation. But energy output can be governed and dialed in to be exactly what you want it to be. Again, this is a demonstrator plant. This location was chosen. It's a port to have minimal waves to make it easier for ships to traverse. But even in a port like this, you can see them bobbing up and down right now, and they are producing and accumulating hydraulic pressure, which then produces power. EcoWave's onshore system by design operates in this inherently lower energy environment. They're intentionally sacrificing raw power for all that operational advantage that we talked about before. But that trade-off comes with some serious challenges that can't be ignored. First is the capacity factor problem. A power plant's nominal rating is one thing, but what matters is how much electricity it actually produces over a year. The data from their 100 kilowatt Hoffa port project is concerning. The highest peak power they've ever reported from it was just 26 kilowatts. So if your peak is only 26% of your nameplate capacity, your average output, your capacity factor is gonna be significantly lower. For investors and grid planners, that could be a major question mark. Second, there's a technology's Achilles heel, extreme site specificity. The business model is entirely dependent on finding a pre-existing structurally sound pier, jetty, or water break that also happens to be in a location with a viable wave climate and a nearby grid connection. That drastically narrows the potential market to a tiny fraction of the world's coastlines. And that leads directly to the utility scale question. If you're limited to these very specific sites, how do you scale up to power a city? A utility scale project of 100 megawatts could require kilometers of continuous suitable coastal structures. Such sites are exceptionally rare. This suggests that EcoWave Power may be more of a niche distributed energy solution provider for ports, remote communities, or military bases rather than a replacement for large central power plants. But that still makes a huge amount of sense. If you're a Navy base in Hawaii or San Diego, or if you're running a port and you want to produce your own energy, this would be an automatic bolt-on that would make a ton of sense. Okay, now let's get back to that shocking cliffhanger. The cost. Can EcoWave Power actually deliver electricity for around $45 per megawatt hour? Well, let's start with a harsh reality. A 2024 report prepared for the California Energy Commission is pretty brutal for the wave energy industry as a whole. It estimates that the levelized cost of energy for current pilot scale projects is somewhere between $370 and $1,220 per megawatt hour. And it cited another analysis that put the average for a new wave energy technology at around $550 per megawatt hour. We're talking about costs that are 10 to 20 times higher than solar and wind. But to be fair, that study averages a lot of different technologies, many of which are those complex and expensive offshore units that we talked about before. EcoWave's power advantage is that it solves two of the biggest cost drivers from those systems, survivability and that high O and M cost. So I dug deeper and found more relevant case studies. A 2024 techno-economic analysis that modeled a hypothetical one megawatt EcoWave power plant in the port of Livorno, Italy. That study came to a much different conclusion. It projected an LCOE for the EWP system between 49.4 and 89.8 euros per megawatt hour, which is roughly 53 to $96. And that's dramatically closer to the company's target. So case closed. It can actually work, right? Well, there are some things in their modeling that we should probably look at. To build their model, the researchers assumed an initial cost of 1.4 million euros for their one megawatt plant. Okay, that's plausible. But then they assumed annual operating and maintenance costs would be 15% of that initial investment, 15%. That is a massive red flag. The entire sales pitch for this tech is its incredibly low operations and maintenance cost, which the company targets is less than 4%. The industry average for expensive offshore tech is 10 to 15. So why would a study that comes to a favorable conclusion for EcoWave Power use an O&M cost assumption that is four to five times higher than the company's own target? 
It also assumes an average annual capacity factor of 35%, which is a little optimistic compared to the 26% that we saw for their other plant in Israel. But most importantly, the study's own authors admit that the results are based on approximations due to the lack of actual clear data to be able to predict things off of. So what this really tells us is that EcoWave's target might actually completely be achievable, but the public models are based on a web of questionable assumptions, all stemming from one or more core problem, a serious lack of real-world data from the company itself. Of all the ways we can make electricity, wave power has always been one of those fascinating ones that just seems obvious. Waves are 24-hour resources that can produce clean energy all the time. But the challenges have always been deep sea environments, having to do, deal with maintenance with large machines and tidal turbines in the middle of deep oceans where currents are strong. This solves for a lot of that. Now again, this is a demonstrator plant in a very calm scenario, but it proves out their point of how easily they can deploy. A couple of months, they had this up and running. And in the future, they have plans for Portugal and Taiwan. They have a plan in Israel where they have really big waves. Portugal, for example, has a 90% wave resource. That means they're going to be producing energy nearly around the clock. And with those accumulators, you can even level out the energy production and give you clean energy output. And that solves one of the big problems with renewable energy, right? Wind can be fluctuating up and down. Solar can have cloudy days and production issues. This has potential to be a 24-hour resource at every port, at every location where it makes sense, and they can keep operational maintenance costs down. That is the winning formula behind this technology. And I think this could be absolutely huge. But what do you think? How big of an impact do you think wave energy has in the future? And how important is it to be onshore versus offshore? Sound off in the comments below. So that is a quick look at EcoWave Power. This amazing technology I think can be pretty transformative. All right, so until next week, you check out this video next. I'm Ricky with Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.